Hey, this is Randy. Today we're going to learn about two types of polynomial special products. The first one is called a difference of squares, and the second one is called a perfect square. Let's do this. So if I gave you this expression right here, and I said expand and combine like terms, you could do it the long way, right? You could say a times a plus a times negative b plus b times a plus b times negative b. And then you would combine like terms if possible. Um, but you'll see that there is a shortcut here because our final answer is going to be what's called a difference of squares. How do we know it's going to be a difference of squares? Well, we're going to walk through this, but I'll just tell you right now. If we have a binomial times itself, and the only difference is that sign in the middle, then we know that our answer is going to be a difference of squares. Okay, so let's, uh, let's work this out the long way, and then eventually we'll see the shortcut that we can use in the future. So a times a is a squared. So we're just going to write a squared. Now we need to do a times negative b is negative ab. So we're going to say minus ab, just like that. Now we need to do b times a, or you can put the a first. So you can say ab. I'm going to put the a first. Then it's easier to recognize that we have like terms. So we're going to say plus AB. So plus AB, just like that. And lastly, we need to do the B times the negative B will give us a negative what? A negative B squared. So we're going to say minus B squared. Okay, look at this, look at this polynomial now. Do we have any like terms? Yes, we do. This right here is like saying minus one AB. And this right here is like saying plus one AB. So those are like terms. And when we have negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. So these two terms right here, they cancel, right? And we're just left with the first term, a squared minus b squared, right? Minus b squared. So we're going to say a squared minus b squared. And we cannot simplify that anymore. So that's our final answer right there, a squared minus b squared. So our instructions are, to expand and combine like terms. So we don't need to do this the long way because we already know the shortcut. We know our answer is going to be this first term squared minus the second term squared because these two binomials are the same, right? The only difference is that sign in the middle. One way to think about it is that this 6d to the fourth corresponds to what was a before, and this 8d corresponds to what was b before. Same thing for this 6d to the fourth corresponds to a, and this 8d corresponds to b, once again. So our final answer is going to be 6d to the fourth squared. So we're going to say equals 6d to the fourth. Let me fix that parenthesis here. 6d to the fourth squared minus the second term squared, 8d squared. So minus 8d squared, right? Now we just need to simplify. So 6 squared is 36. So 36. And the properties of exponents, exponents tell us that when we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we need to multiply those two numbers. So this is going to be d to the power of 4 times 2, or d to the power of 8. d to the power of 8. Now we still have a minus right here. And now we need to apply this squared to each part of this term, the 8 and the d. So 8 squared is 64. So we have 36d to the 8th minus 64. And then this is like saying d to the power of 1 inside there. So 1 times 2 is 2, right? So it's going to be 64 minus 64d squared, d squared. And we just got the product, right, of those two original binomials without having to multiply every term because we knew the shortcut. If we had the same sign, in each of the binomials, and everything else was, this, was the same, we would have what's called a perfect square. And now that is what we're going to talk about. What do we do when we have a perfect square? Well, there's two types of perfect squares that we could see. One of them would be a form like this, a plus b, all squared. And the second type would be a minus b, all squared. So let's expand this out and see what we get. You'll notice that this is also going to give us a shortcut once we work it out. So a plus b squared, okay, well, think of it like this. 5 squared is what? 5 times 5, right? So a plus b squared is a plus b times a plus b. So we're going to say a plus b 
times a plus b, right? Now let's multiply this out. a times a is a squared. So we're going to say equals a squared. Now we have what's next here? a times b is a is a b. So we're going to say plus a b plus a b. Now we need to do b times a. Okay, well that's the same as saying a b. So once again we need to do plus a b plus a b, right? And lastly, b times b is b squared. So we're going to say plus b squared. Okay, now do we have any like terms here? Yes, we do. We have the ab right here and the ab right here. So ab plus ab is like saying 1ab plus 1ab, which is going to give us 2ab. So there you can see our simplified expression after we've multiplied a plus b and a plus b. Now the same thing is going to happen with this second example. The only difference is that the sign on this middle term is going to be negative. So it's going to be minus 2ab in the middle. So because we've already done a lot of practice multiplying binomials, I decided to not work out this entire multiplication because we've done it enough. Um, so the point is, when we have a perfect square, that is a plus b squared or a minus b squared, when we have a binomial squared like either of these examples, we can shortcut right to this form of the answer. All we did here is square the first term, and then we did it plus two times the first term times the second term, right? And then we added the square of the second term, right? Same thing in the second example. All we did is square the first term, right? A squared. And then this time, because we have a minus in between these two terms, we did minus two times this first term times the second term. And then lastly, plus the second term squared, right? So let's do a couple quick examples here using this logic. So the instructions are the same here. The 7x to the fifth is like the a, and the 3x to the third, or 3x cubed, is like the b, right? So we need to do this term squared plus this term times this term times 2, right? Because we had plus 2ab right there. And then lastly, plus the second term squared. Now when we expand all that out and we write it out after we've simplified, it's going to look like this. Okay, so let's examine this. So the first term was 7x to the fifth. So if we square that, 7 squared is 49. There's the 49. And x to the fifth squared is x to the tenth. So there's that first term. Second one is 2 times this term times this term. Okay, well, this term times this term is going to be 7 times 3 is 21. So 21 x to the power of 5 plus 3 is 8. So 21 x to the 8th, I'll write that here, 21 x to the 8th, and like I said, times 2. So when you double this, you get 42 x to the power of 8. And lastly, this term squared is 3 times 3 is 9, there's the 9, and then x to the 3rd squared is x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd, or x to the 6th. So there is the final expression using the shortcut that we discussed. Now this second one is the exact same. Right, the only difference is that sign in the middle. So once again, we just did this term squared to get 49x to the 10th. And then we said minus this term times this term times, times 2, right? So 21x to the 8th times 2 is 42x to the 8th. We don't want to forget this minus because that makes a huge difference. Very important. And lastly, we did this term which corresponded to b squared, right? So 3 times 3 is 9. There's the 9. And x cubed squared is x to the power of 6. And with that, we are finished with a video on polynomial special products. See you next time. Hey, hey.